Greetings and salutations, all you fine feathered individuals. Welcome to another FPF League Unlock. We are wrapping up round one of bracket stage action from MSI 2024 and PSG versus BLG, the first actual series to deliver some excitement and drama. G2 and T1, historically, you look at pretty much any series and they deliver in that capacity. And this year's version at the Mid-Season Invitational is no different. Whenever the best from EU versus the best internationally match up, there is always seemingly a bit of a banger on the rift. And that is what we are certifying it today. We go the full distance, G2 versus T1 and right from the get-go in this series we were getting a little bit of spice especially when it comes to the draft which we know G2 is able to do lane swapping not as prominent as I was expecting it to be in this series but did get those fun picks as I mentioned and we got caps evolving into claps getting solo kills a couple of times in this series versus that tristana azir matchup and then we get one of the primo plays of the tournament so far check out bb broken blade on the yasuo predicting the flash out of owner it honestly looked like he was locked in or locked on like it was a targeted ability him getting the knock up as the early game looked so damn good for G2 Esports, but they were not ready for the cow in the bot lane. Kyria on the Alistair multiple times in this first game, finding sick, clean, nasty, wicked engages, re-engages as Zeus teleports in to grab more kills. Faker's Azir was not great early on, but he grabs a couple of kills to get a nasty little shutdown there. And here's Kyria again. Caps, despite getting that solo kill, just it felt like he fell behind in CS. We're accustomed to seeing Tristanus have so many creeps, uh, but he was never in the right spot to be picking those up. Even though G2 is able to lock up the flip Baron as Yikes secures it on the Lilia. It's again a three-man pulverized out of Kyria as T1 finds the team fights time and time again, even though owner was left alone in this pit for a while. Guma was Mr. Consistent DPS, not just in this game one, but really throughout this entire series as G2 has a near immaculate early game, but a tale as old as time. T1 finds the team fights that they probably shouldn't be winning, but again, Kyria with some nice engages. Faker gets a bounce back from a rough start in that one um, to close it out by G2. Probably feeling real good about their early game, uh, heading forward in this series in game two again it's it's not a spicy pick per se we've seen broken blade on zach plenty of times we've seen the rexi in the jungle but yike a little bit of a different angle because he's building a bit more damage a little less tanky on the rexi and a little more damage which we love to see but it was broken blade doing a lot of the damage on the zach pulling two people in on this fight around dragon as g2 is just absolutely bloodthirsty caps was getting a cs lead on his own and even though he gets popped by owners viego the rest of g2 is there to show up that's a zero and four leona for mickey he had a rough game one a super rough start to game two but finally uh stopped getting caught out and was able to find some engages as now all of a sudden g2 had a 3k gold lead it's another nice engage faker Follows up his not so great Azir performance with an extra rough Talia performance in this second game. Zeus is getting a one man Orn ulti on the Zac. That ain't it. That's not the angle that you're looking for. Even though Kyria gets a four man Nico ulti, there's just no follow up. Guma gets a snipe uh, on Hansama, but it doesn't matter because there's multiple kills going over to G2. They're even. The biggest surprise of this entire series is how well G2 was playing around the map they're both getting a baron a two-man baron while denying a soul point for t1 just hovering around that dragon getting turret advantages excuse me getting turret advantages and just playing cleanly smooth across it took north of 30 minutes but g2 was pretty much fully in control for all of this uh game two eight and oh on the rec side uh, for Yike, who we talked about. He needs to have a level up if G2 has any chance, not just against T1, but at this tournament as a whole. And so far, the first two games, 
looking pretty nice out of him as now we got ourselves a series tied up at one and obviously they liked the angle that they had in that first game because game three it's a return to Yasuo for Broken Blade Caps gets the Oriana again and again He's solo killing and styling on Faker. This time it's the Aurelian Soul, and he gives him the little whoops a daisy ring around the circle. <laughs> Flashing backwards into the Aurelian Soul to get another solo kill. Caps was rolling in this one, and even though T1 had a 1K lead, uh, the story of multiple games in this series, Mickey finding catches on the poppy. It's first. Guma that's going down and Kyria on the Camille with no flash. Double kill over to Han Sama's Lethality Varus. And now still a pretty even game despite that solid early game out of T1. But another nice knockout from Mickey. Catches out Zeus and then it's the Shockwave. First the ulti from the Yasuo and then the Shockwave out of Caps. Pulling people in as it's three kills eventually that goes over to G2. And what is happening? They got a 6k gold lead. They're getting a somewhat uncontested Ocean Soul. Well, T1's hovering around to try and contest, but the knockup. It's a feeble effort as the kill goes over to G2. And even Yike, wrong side of uh, the bush there, gets caught out, but... It's a 400 IQ play because he baits in. Broken Blade's able to ulti off of him with the knockback, and it just ends up being multiple kills and kills. Kyria's gonna scoot his way out of there, but the damage is done. It's three over two G2. Now just tying a bow on the game as they secure the Baron, and Owner has no chance to go for a steal. It's pure desperation. Faker gets yoinked back in. This ends up being a full ace to go with Dragon Soul and the Baron buff as G2 closes out the game. 24 kills in 29 minutes just for G2. If you throw in T1's easily eight kills. You're looking at over a kill per minute in that third game, which is exactly the recipe that you know G2 wants if they have any chance in this series as kills 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 chaos much like we've seen Fnatic do with some of these top tier teams drag them into the mud bring them into the sewers to play a little bit scrappy League of Legends and that's how G2 gets a 2-1 series advantage the problem for the top seed from EU is T1 probably saw the same thing and said okay let's slow it down a little bit we get a ton of 80 carry bands in this fourth game, which means we are left with the little Kogma Renata Glass for G2 in the bot lane. Faker had a rough series to this point. The first three games absolutely been outclassed by Caps, but he gets to be on that oh so safe pocket pick in his ear. And same goes for Kyria, who had some disgusting bard ulties, bard stuns throughout this entire set as eventually Caps was running away from that full health Zin Zhao. Owner's going to be able to dive under the turret to grab a kill as it ends up being a 4-1 to one start for T1. Do or die in this series as they're down on match point. It was so much slower. 13 minutes was when that first kill was. Now we've only got 10 kills at 23 minutes. And we mentioned Faker earlier. When the times get tough, when the games matter the most, that's when you get the clean, the pure, the iconic type of Azir shuffles. Even though G uh, T1 already had a lead at this point, Faker Faker, Mr. Closer, pulls in the sweep. A couple of G2 members, four kills, go over to T1. And really, it's just that one fight around Dragon and that one fight where uh, Faker gets the shuffle is the difference maker in this game as we even get a thumbs up. Golden thumbs up sliding in. Finally, we get to see a showing from the GOAT in game four to push this one to silver scrapes. The complete opposite of that game three that was kills left, right, and center. Scrappy all around. This was just calm, cool, collected, controlled out of T1. A classic LCK versus Western squad matchup on the international stage where it was fully methodical and T1 Close this one out. Four silver scrapes into that game five action. It's a Cassante sighting. Oh no. We know he was 5 0 oh in that BLG PSG series. Broken Blade gets the Zack, and we've been calling for pocket picks out of Yike. He pulls out the Bell Veth in game five, and the unique little combo of Poppy Jinx in the bot lane for G2, which 
was actually absolutely lethal as Han Sama was getting spoon-fed kills by Mickey with the immaculate early game performance on the support poppy. It was three kills, a killing spree early for Han Sama, 2k gold lead. Everything's looking amazing for the upset for G2, but T1 slowly crawling their way back into this series. And even though Han Sama got so damn fed early on, it's a Cassante. And even worse so, the build order. For Han Sama, he does not opt for a Last Whisper third or fourth. And Baker had laser eye locked in charms and ultis on the Ari. He was finding Han Sama time and time again. This is the turning point in the series as Baker dashed in. 1v4 basically to pick off Han Sama. Then he TPs to grab another kill onto Caps. T1 gets back into this game and all of a sudden they're in control. And this is the fight where you see the build order for Han Sama. How many times does he have to auto attack this Cassante before he can finally kill him? You feel like with how many kills Hans was spoon fed early on, this is the fight. He's untouched the entire time. This is the fight where he should take over, be able to carry for G2. You feel like if he goes left side of uh, that little ridge on Baron, maybe he can clean up the fight more, but he's unable to get much done as T1 still able to grab the Baron. And then again, look at him whacking on Cassante. He's not doing any damage to him because he doesn't have the LDR. He gets pulled back in. Zack is already in that blob form. Look at how low the health bars are of G2. They're not able to get anything done. A couple more kills go over to T1, and then it's Hansama again. Look out for Faker. He slides in. You thought the Azir performance was good in game four. An absolute immaculate vintage Ari performance in the fifth and decisive game of this series. We ignore the bad first three games that Baker had in this series because he's the one who's getting the last laugh to close this one out and send T1 on to the next round to get a date, a little bit of a rematch from last year's MSI against BL. G. You feel horrible for G2 because they had it. It felt like they had, they cooked enough. They'd done enough that they had a chance at winning this series. The early game was so damn good. You feel terrible for Mickey because that game five was the best poppy support performance you might have ever seen in a professional game. But again, Faker gets the last laugh. Uh, Caps was kind of gapping him in most of this series, but again, that fourth and fifth game proving why Faker is so integral to this team and integral to the eSport as a whole. But listen, if you're G2, you're feeling very good about yourselves because you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with T1. You proved that you could compete. You're going to losers against PSG, who I know had that incredible series against BLG, but G2 will and should be favorites in that matchup to climb their way back uh, and match up against some of these other LCK and LPL squads. The Belvet in Game 5, I alluded to it. Love to see Yike on it. He had zero impact. He wasn't able to get anything rolling, which is too bad because he had... A pretty damn good series, especially on those Rek'Sai games, but could not get it done on that Belveth in that fifth and decisive matchup. And I already alluded to Han Sama. Needed to see a step up out of him because uh, Guma has been the most consistent T1 player for basically the entirety of the spring split. He's always Mr. Old Reliable to be able to take over a team fight. Haven't got that same sauce out of Han Sama and that... Seems like the final domino that needs to fall for G2 to really be able to stand out at this year's MSI because there are so many damn incredible AD carries that G2 is going to be matching up against. But through these first two best of fives, you're feeling pretty good about both Fnatic and even more so G2 for taking T1 the absolute distance. These guys, I think the rivalry now is 17 to 12 head-to-head -head win loss in favor of T1 versus G2. And the fact that it's that close to 50-50 really speaks to just how incredible this rivalry has been over the years and how G2 has actually been able to match up internationally time and time again, year in, year out. And a lot of that is because of Caps in the mid lane. Super excited to see both of these squads. We got double best of fives going over the weekend, both the loser's bracket and winner's bracket. There are no signs of slowing down at this year's MSI, but that is it today for League Unlocked. My name is Eric, and thank you 
always to all you beautiful people for hanging out and watching and you best believe we'll catch you on that flippity flip.